Hi folks, welcome to Kern. Kern builds some of the most high-end, most accurate, most stable CNC machines in the world. Kern is located in Garmisch Partenkirchen in southern Germany, just on the Austrian border, and honestly, one of the most beautiful places in the world. This was an absolute treat to get to see the inside operations of this facility, how they build these machines, and what makes a Kern a Kern. And when I say accurate, we're talking machines that can regularly produce plus or minus two micron accuracy, or 70 millionths of an inch. It's not just that ability to make one part incredibly accurate, it's that ability to tie in their amazing machines that have a huge number of tools, tool holders, work holding automation, so that your first part has the same tolerances and accuracy and precision and surface finishes as the 500th part. So let's walk through some of the coolest tidbits and factoids we learned on this tour. Number one, how did they get started? Kern didn't start as a machine tool builder. And in fact, to this day, Kern runs one of the most high-end, most precise job shops in the world, and certainly within Southern Germany. And a significant portion of their business to this day remains operating that job shop. And it was that job shop work that led to the creation of their first machine. Decades ago, companies like IBM and Siemens and other folks in the medical and aerospace world had increasingly high demands of the parts they needed done. And long story short, Kern realized the way to make these parts was to build their own machine to their own spec, to their own design. And after they built the machine, some of those customers said, oh, well, if you're building one, we'd like to have one as well. In fact, you might've recognized the Pyramid Nano from the Nicholas Hacko watch tour video. That's another industry that Kern is incredibly well respected in given the absolute intricate tolerances and incredibly small detailed work required in the watchmaking world. But if you haven't heard of Kern, I don't blame you. They're an incredibly small company and every year they put out less than 100 machines, usually all pre-sold. Number two, let's stop talking about that accuracy and put it to the test. The day that John Grimsman and I spent touring Kern's manufacturing facility as well as their job shop, we made a test part and on that test part, we did a five axis swarf style operation as well as an interpolated operation of effectively an HSK taper. With the interpolated toolpath, we have the X and the Y axes constantly moving and actually changing directions as they move around the four quadrants of the part, which really tests the accuracy of the machine, particularly as you hit those points where, for instance, the X axis moves from going positive to going negative. With the Swarf style operation, it's your classical five axis style toolpath where the tool is actually remaining in one location. Your A or your B axis is tipped up at an angle and then your C axis rotates the part around as the tool cuts. We then took that part over to their state of the art calibrated Zeiss CMM to confirm those accuracy numbers and the interpolated accuracy, meaning that part was machined while the X and the Y axes were in motion was 2.1 microns. And again, that's across a probably one and a half inch or 40 millimeter area with the Zeiss CMM doing constant contact measuring around that for accuracy, circularity, tolerance, etc. Number three, some of the parts that are made on the Kern are so small they're actually pretty difficult to see or find with the naked eye. Here we're looking underneath a microscope to try to find the part. I could see a speck of something, but I wasn't sure that was even the part. Absolutely amazing. Here's that same part, but 100 times larger. Number four, even though these current machines have this feeling of being incredibly specialized machines with such an emphasis on accuracy, they're workhorses. They are designed with automation, high tool storage, and productivity in mind. And nothing exemplifies that better than the fact that K1, which is what they call their own job shop, is a job shop that runs 24 seven with a focus on productivity, not unlike any other job shop. And that was probably my favorite thing about the Kern Micro. The elegance and design and integration of the tool changer, the work holding and automation. 
On the right side of the microbe, you have these racks. Each rack itself holds eight tools and you can have multiple racks in the machine with up to a total of over 200 tools so that you can set up the tools offline or you can store pre-set racks offline. And it's just a very elegant way of handling job setups and tooling. The same interface and that same robotic arm can also have a mix of work holding built into it. So you can have a ROA or other automation style built in so that in a relatively small footprint, you could have something like one or 200 tools as well as 10, 20 or 50 work pieces set up. For larger work, you can also set up a proper third party or standalone automation system on the left side of the machine, your system 3Rs, your ROAs, so that you could either be swapping out palletized work holding or raw materials. Number five, the emphasis on thermal stability. Building a high quality, accurate, consistent machine tool involves a lot of high quality components and alignment and so forth, but it's the thermal element that really sets Kern apart. And one of the interesting things is that when we look at their raw mineral casting base, there's nothing about it that jumped out at me as being symmetrical at first glance, but it is thermally symmetrical, meaning as the temperature rises or lower, that casting moves in a repeatable and consistent and even manner. And that's what Kern does. They track that. They have a team of engineers or PhDs or scientists who are understand what happens to this 42,000 RPM spindle as it grows. Because as it warms up, that spindle stretches in Z, if you will. They know how much that grows. That is programmed in to the Heidenhain control. They use oversized motors so that as a motor puts off heat, they not only know how that heat grows, but by using oversized motors, they are able to reduce that, I believe, by the cubic function so that there is less heat, period. Many of their machines have huge amounts of thermal flushing, moving actual liquid through the machine again to maintain that stability. Number six, it takes a long time to build a kern. The machine itself may spend up to six weeks being built and assembled, and then a equal amount of time going through its trials and workup and verification. Every single department within Kern has to sign off on that machine and anybody has the right to say they aren't happy with it, they're not comfortable with it, it needs to get reworked or revisited. And in the end, every department head will sign off on the machine, including our host, Simon, the CEO of the company. Number seven, they have a bell at the Kern facility, and many times when a customer buys a machine, the customer is able to come and ring that bell. When you buy a Kern, it's not a traditional machine tool purchase. You're really becoming part of their story, and they're becoming part of your story. You're joining their sort of family. You're getting to know them on a much more intimate level, and it really is a two-way relationship. It's really cool. Number seven, did I mention small parts? Here we are under a pretty amazing microscope vision system, trying to find the part that had fallen into the end of a very small glass sort of Petri dish style container, and there it is. Now, if I'm not doing a good job of explaining the scale of that part, let's move it so that it's next to a one cent coin, effectively a penny. And if I still haven't impressed you, they can drill holes through a human hair to the point where this is actually now a relatively boring and unchallenging demonstration for them. Number eight, Kerns, like any modern machine tool, have automatic tool changers. And thus the tool changing arm is able to change out the tools as needed throughout a CNC or CAM program. No big deal, right? Well, unfortunately, sometimes you aren't allowed to use the tool changer. Anybody guess why? Some of the tools the Kern uses are so small in diameter that the air friction of an automatic tool change operation could break the tool. Isn't that amazing? And that's why Kern has specialized vision systems used to set those tools up and measure their gauge length. Number nine, machining carbide. This is mind blowing. This is a regular end mill. We have had some fun playing around doing this with high speed steel, which is quite hard at north of 60 Rockwell. This is carbide. Not only have they machined it, they've machined it accurately. They've machined it with a really good surface finish. And that center hole is thread milled. 
for, I believe, an M1 or an M2 screw. And number 10, bragging rights on surface finishes. One of the other reasons to purchase a Kern is minimizing downstream post-processing operations. When you have a machine this accurate, not only can it hold those tolerances across a large part run or across many months of operation, but you can minimize things like lapping or polishing or sanding or other things that may have to occur as a result of tool marks or inadequate surface finishes. The finishes that come off these kerns are absolutely amazing. And our host, Marvin, his full-time job as a materials scientist is working up recipes and understanding how to achieve these finishes on various types of parts. If you were at IMTS or another trade show, you may have seen the Cloudgate sculpture, commonly known as the Bean in Chicago, that was machined on a kern. And this is straight off the machine. Absolutely superb. Again, a big shout out to Kern. Their hospitality was incredible and the pride they take in the machines that they produce and the, the culture and the process and the fact that they're so unique and that they're building these machines, but they're also running their own job shop where they use their own machines. was really a cool perspective. So thank you to Simon and Marv. It was a wonderful chance to not only be able to tour, but to allow us to film it and share that with you. Hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. See you soon.